Where do you find these P and U listed wastes? Well, P listed wastes again are very common in healthcare, which includes pharmacies. So your pharmacy may have some leftover pills of warfarin. Warfarin is also known as a medicine under a different name, Coumadin. It's a common blood thinner for heart patients. They also will have a fair amount of nicotine. Nicotine is a highly regulated chemical, was once used as a pesticide, and this stuff is common in uh, things like uh, nicotine lozenges, nicotine gums, and because of those materials, these retail facilities become very highly regulated hazardous waste generators. For a more industrial setting, if you have a laboratory, particularly those places where you have lots of small containers that are easy to forget, you may run across these P or U listed waste. And this picture on the right is of a high school chemistry lab. It's the little room next to the chemistry class where the, where the teacher stores all of the chemicals. And some of those have probably been there since your parents were taking the class. How do you know which of those containers is good, which ones aren't, unless somebody goes to look at them? Now that's it for the unused listed waste, but remember we still have two more. We have the K list and the F list, which describe wastes that have been through processes. Starting with the F list. The F list can be broken out into six different groups, six different uh, categories, we'll say, of wastes that are similar. First of which are used solvents. Some F listed wastes are what we would call electroplating or chemical metalworking wastes. Third, chemical manufacturing. Fourth, wood preservation. Fifth, petroleum refining, and lastly, leachate from the disposal of certain listed wastes. So where do you find the F list in the regulations? Well, it's under Table 4.5, once again in the rules. If you just keep turning ahead a little bit from the U list, you'll come from the F listed wastes. As you can see here, once again, we have a table, three columns. The first column is the uh, waste code or waste number. The second column, instead of being just a chemical name, is a far more complicated description, however. And that's because this description talks about the process used to create these wastes. And they can be kind of hard to understand in many instances. So knowing that you can break these, these listed wastes out into different groups can reduce how many of them you really need to understand well. You know if you have a spent solvent, well, you only need to understand fully those listed wastes that describe spent solvents. So the others become less important and you have to spend less time looking at them. The K list is perhaps the easiest of the four lists because only 13 types of industries can actually create a K-listed waste. If you're not in one of those 13 industries, you don't have to worry about the K-listed waste. And in New Hampshire, at least, I've only run across so far two types of industries that are generating K-listed waste. The first is known as the iron and steel industry. But unlike what you may think of as iron and steel manufacturing, these are only talking about industries that have a foundry operation. It's the foundry process that can create these K-listed wastes. So if you're in the business of machining, welding, cutting, working with metals in another way, that's not what we're talking about with K-listed wastes. The other industry that I've encountered is the ink manufacturing industry. But by all means, take a look at the K-list, read through the different groups of industries, find out if any of them describe the industry that you work in. And if you have questions, again, 
you can always feel free to call us at 271-2942. Thank you.